In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the group by function provided by the underscore JS code library. Now, in order to make use of underscore, you have to first reference it from your web page, as I've done here. I'm referencing it from a popular CDN. But you can also download it to your local development environment and reference it from your local web server as well. Now, the group by function in underscore basically allows us to take a collection of data and take uh, one of the, the properties or fields of that data and group the various um, items in the collection by the values for that particular property or field. So what we want to do is we're going to take this list of people that we have here and we want to set this up so that somebody can click on the age, city, or gender headers and basically group this data by those values. So for example, if I clicked on city, I should be able to group the data by city. So I would have the two people who live in Atlanta would be right next to each other. The two people who live in Dublin would be right next to each other. And the two people who live in San Diego would be right next to each other. Now we can kind of see what this grouping looks like already by looking at the male and female, except that we haven't officially grouped the data by that. It just happens to be in that order. So to do this, what we need to do is we need to use our group by element to bait our group by function to take our list of or our collection of table rows and then group by the selected value or the selected column. So let's jump back to our code here. Now let's scroll down here. We're going to take a look at our table headers. You're going to see where we have a group call function which has been assigned to the click event handler for the age, city, and gender uh, group table header columns. Also you'll notice up here we have a little style so that when we mouse over these we'll get the little pointer and then we can group by age, city, and gender. So let's scroll down here past our sample data and we're going to take a look at our group call function. Now we're not going to implement the entire function for this code demonstration. That would just take too long and be too distracting from what the group by function does. So I've got some basically some starter code here that's going to basically do some of the basic calculations to figure out such figure out information such as the column node index and our group by function index as well as retrieve the appropriate rows from the table from the DOM and I have some helper functions helper functions at the bottom that we're going to take a look at that will kind of help demonstrate some of the DOM manipulation that's going on here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need to know the column node index. So basically, I need to know which, which column our DOM node is going to be in that we're going to be pulling out the value for calculating the group by. And that's what this column node index is. The next thing is I have a group by function index. Now, depending upon the column we click on, we'll be using a different function for calculating the group by value. So what I've done is down below I have a, um, a helper function called get group by value funks, which basically is going to return back to me an array of group by functions that's appropriate for each column. Then I have my get all rows, which is basically going to return back a list of my or a collection of my table rows um, that we're going to be retrieving our data from and doing our calculations. So now what I need to do is I actually need to implement my group by code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var grouped rows and then I'm going to say underscore dot group by. All right. Now the first parameter I'm going to pass in here is rows. So this is the rows that I have up from up here where I'm getting all of my rows for the data that I want to group. The next thing I need to create is I need to specify my iterative function. So my iterative function is going to take three parameters. Row, index, and original rows. Now to space this out a little bit better, I'm going to move that down to a new line. And we'll do that there. Now row represents the actual row that we're iterating over at any given moment. The index represents the zero-based index of that row within the collection. And then original rows is basically the original set of rows that was passed in here. All right, so now what I need to do is I basically need to return back the value that's going to be used for grouping. 
Now, it would be nice if it was possible that I could just do something like this, row.childnodes, and then I could specify my, my column node index, like this, and then I could say text content. However, the problem is that will work fine for doing something along the lines of um, of grouping by uh, grouping by the city or grouping by gender, but the problem with age is that basically this would result in me creating a group for each specific age, which really wouldn't look all that good for grouping purposes. So instead, let's take a look at these grouping functions that I've created down here at the bottom. So I have this get group by value functions, and I basically have created two grouping functions. One simply takes the text content value and just simply returns it. The second group by function, though, is a little more sophisticated. What it does is it actually creates a number range. So I want to return, for example, or I want to group by everyone who's in their 20s or everybody who's in their 30s or who's in their 40s. So you're going to see here that I have this number range and basically I can pass in the text content, convert it to a floating point number. I then take that floating point number, divide it by 10, and then I use the math floor function. So let's say somebody was 24 years old. So 24 would be in the text content. I convert that to a float. 24 divided by 10 would be 2.4. So when I do math.floor, that's equal to 2. And then I multiply 2 times 10 and I get 20. So now I can say 22 and then 20 plus 10. So ages 20 to 30, for example. So I can do my grouping by in that manner. And then so I've got my number range, which I'm going to use for age. And then I have my text content function and then my other text content function. So now what I want to do is I actually want to make use of these functions inside of my code. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say group by value funks, which is going to be my array of functions. Now I'm going to know which one I want to use, group by function index, just like that. And then I'm going to invoke the function. There we go. And so now what this is going to produce for me is my collection of grouped rows. Now, down here what I want to do is I'm actually going to retrieve the keys for my group rows and then I want to sort those keys and then ultimately rebuild my list, which is what I'm going to do down here, adding in my group header column and my group header row for each group and then down here completely replacing the old T body with the new T body. So with our code done, let's jump over and take a look at the result. So we're going to reload this and I can click on city and now it says I'm grouping by city. So Atlanta, Dublin, San Diego. I can group by gender. So I have female and then I have male. Or I can group by age and I can say 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50 and you can see where I have my age groups. So as you can see this group by function is actually quite useful. Now we have to pair it with other things for example the sort by function to actually um, to actually sort those those actual groups so it it looks makes more sense in our output and then of course we also use the underscore dot each function to build out our new table body but combining these different functions and putting them together allows us to create some very interesting and very functional um, UI components for our web application.